Thank you so much to Dr. Cameron for that wonderful introduction and thank you to the University of Kent for inviting me here today. It's a huge honour to be awarded this degree, especially here in my hometown Rochester, in the cathedral where I used to sing Christmas carols in my school choir. Life is very weird. <laughs> I know it's customary for the recipient of such an honour to say a few words and share some wisdom. I'm not sure that surrounded by so many learned people, academics and graduates, many of whom have so much more life experience than me, that I'm very well qualified for this task. But I guess I've done some stuff in my life that I've lived so far which might be of interest, so I'll do my best. One question I'm often asked is how to become a published author. I think it's one of those careers that sounds a bit far-fetched to most people, like an astronaut or a secret agent. They don't tell you how to do it at school. But one day, when I was a teenager, I decided to give it a shot anyway. Being a school kid, I didn't really have anything to lose at that point. I just spent the time I should have been doing maths homework writing stories instead. I was just having a fun time. Dr. Cameron has told you a bit about my career journey. I wanted to talk about it a little more. What I did to find myself in my dream career as an author, illustrator, and screenwriter at the age of 29. I've had a lot of luck. Luck in writing the right thing at the right time. Luck in finding an amazing literary agent who liked my writing. Luck in finding the perfect TV production company who understood my vision. It's a bit ironic to be here celebrating your many years of hard work and study, and I'm telling you about luck. They don't award degrees in luck. But what you can do when luck comes your way, when there's an opportunity, a chance to speak up, reach out, express yourself, you've got to try. Trying is incredibly powerful. Trying is seizing an opportunity and saying, what if it works out? Because you never really know what might happen. Things might just go better than you think. That's what I did when I was 18 years old with the first draft of my book I'd written on my little blue laptop. I thought, why not give it a go? I might be lucky this time. Of course, there's hard work. It takes a lot of hard work to achieve your dreams. Even while I was at university, I spent most of my time writing my second novel and not going to lectures, maybe not a great thing to admit in this scenario. But to those who've, who've completed a degree apprenticeship, I genuinely do understand the huge effort required to work and study at the same time, and I greatly admire and applaud you. So there's luck, and there's hard work, but when I'm asked how to become a published author, I don't usually give either of those my answer. They're important, yes, but what I usually say to aspiring authors is to write the story you want to read. It's a bit of a cliche response in the writing world, but I think it's cliche because it's true. When I wrote my first novel, Solitaire, I couldn't find any books that I felt represented my life. I was a bored, moody teenage girl at an all-girls school who desperately wished my life was a little bit more interesting. The popular books at the time were Twilight and The Hunger Games. Probably didn't want my life to be like either of those. I wanted a book about my world, the social dynamics of school life, escaping the real world on social media, and finding a new friend who completely understands you. I couldn't find any stories like that, so I wrote one. You have to believe in your story or no one else will. You have to be the first person rooting for yourself your own cheerleader, your first reader. And I know that's hard. It's so hard to believe in yourself, especially nowadays when we're being bombarded on social media by all kinds of people doing so many different and amazing things. Something that helps me is to picture my younger self, that little kid in year six on the classroom carpet deciding she wants to tell stories for the rest of her life. Maybe it's hard to root for myself sometimes, but I'll believe in her and I'll do it for her. My school wasn't super keen on me pursuing the arts. They wanted me to be more interested in maths and science. Fortunately, I didn't care too much what my teachers thought. Sorry again to the professors in the room. And I focused on doing what I loved, which was writing stories. I wrote a short story and submitted it to an online magazine. 
and it got published. Then I did the National Novel Writing Month Challenge, which challenged you to write 50,000 words in one month. I didn't succeed with that because that's a bit crazy, but I did manage 20,000 words, the start of my novel, Solitaire. And once I finished the book, I sent it to a few literary agents. I knew it would probably get rejected, most submissions do, and it was. I was rejected, mostly. I was on the school bus when I got an email from a literary agent who said that she loved the story and she wanted to represent me. I'm sure my parents thought this was a scam, but it wasn't. A real literary agency wanted to represent my writing. If I'd never tried, none of that would have happened. If I hadn't said to myself, what's the worst that could happen? None of that would have happened. If I hadn't believed that my story had a chance, that it could be loved as much as I loved it, none of that would have happened. I think that trying is one of the greatest acts of self-love. Now, as well as writing, I love to draw. Some of you in the room may have heard of my comic series slash Netflix show, Heartstopper. When Solitaire was published, it featured two side characters called Nick and Charlie, two teenage boys who were very much in love. But we don't learn much about them in Solitaire. We don't learn how they got together or much about their relationship. I knew that when I finished that book that I wanted to tell their story somehow. And so I began drawing my comic series, Heartstopper. At the time, teen romance comics weren't really a thing in the UK. So I uploaded it for free online and I found a whole community of people on the internet who loved it. When I was younger, there were very few stories about the queer community, and even fewer which were joyful and uplifting to read. But I soon realized that so many people, especially queer teenagers, had been looking for a story like Heartstopper, a hopeful queer romance that told them that despite all the hardships that young queer people face, everything would be all right in the end. In 2019, Heartstopper was optioned by TV company Seesaw Films, and it was greenlit by Netflix in, at the start of 2021. Suddenly, I was surrounded by a whole group of creative people wanting to share in telling a story that I had written. I was blown away by this shared creative drive to tell a queer story that had a positive vibe and a happy ending. But the greatest surprise of all was the response to Heartstopper when season one aired in 2022. We thought we were making a niche little show that didn't have much of a hope of renewal, but the explosion of love for the show was huge. We thought the show would just appeal to queer teens, but it's found viewers of all ages and identities. I never imagined when I started uploading my little comic for free because nobody would publish it, that it could become something so big and so beloved. All I knew that it was a story that I loved Perhaps I should have seen that if I loved it so much, maybe there would be others out there who would love it too. Now I know that not everyone in this room wants to be a writer or an illustrator, but perhaps you have a story in your head, or maybe it's a vision or an idea, a business or an invention, a dream job or a life aspiration, a world that no one else can see living in your brain. If the thing you want to be or do, or to happen, isn't there yet, you can create it. You can write the story you want to read, whatever that means in your world. Who knows? Maybe there's a whole community of people just waiting for it to exist. There's only one way to find out. Thank you.